All right. Sup with it. Welcome to Zero to Hero. We are on week nine. Last week we took a break because I was feeling sick and Atrac was dead tired. So my apologies. Premise is how far can we get Atrac to becoming really good? Good premise. Okay, I gotta get rid of this ugly chat with blur on the bottom. <laughs> Any chat with blur is an ugly chat. Yes. Okay, removed. So, I'll recap. Last week we talked about reaction windows. Let me open week eight just for reference. Um, last week we or we talked about reaction windows and like how do we go about. This wasn't last week, two weeks ago. Or two weeks ago, yes. So it may not be a little fresh in my mind. So let's, let's definitely uh, talk about it again. Or like, right. quick... So just a quickie. So basically, um, those two bars beneath uh, Marth um, represent like a reaction window of a bad player in yellow and reaction of a good player in green. So if you approach all the way from yellow, then you, you can most likely hit them. Um, you'll have that much generous time to hit them, and against bad players, anything hits. But if you try to hit, like, try to start, like, a maneuver here, like, um, I'm, I'm really bad at drawing lines, like, here, against a good player, um, this Marth will react to whatever you throw, and it probably, um, counter you and punish you hard. So, um, you have to be aware of decision trees and when you decide to do them. Um, and so often, you get bad, um, you do bad things because you assume that they can't react to it. For example, me being the scrub lord here, trying to do a dash attack from back here, and Ty in this matchup, dash dance grabbed me, and it was a very risky move for me because I assumed too much from Ty not being able to react to it. So we talked about that, and then we talked about forcing a reaction um, where we talked yep. about. KK walking slowly and threatening space, forcing a reaction out of Kira, and then he punishes that spot dodge. So that's often how we win the neutral, is by forcing these reactions by threatening space up close around this range, not so much all the way here. Yep, okay. I've been I've been doing that more. I've definitely been noticing it after we were talking. Uh, just a lot less full screen stuff. It was the first thing I told myself was stop doing full screen dash tags, full screen dash grabs. So I just run up to like about that green line, maybe a little more because I'm still obviously new at it. But run up enough where it makes them like do something. And then as long as that something doesn't hit me, I'm usually like in a huge advantage. So that alone has been a, a, a big improvement. Yeah. Um, so have, so. And you notice that people, you start to notice that like everybody has like really bad habits. Like, yeah, most people just do things automatically, including myself. But like once you start thinking about it, you can like punish it more. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people are just, uh, the half of their neutral is just waiting for me to do something really stupid. And if yeah. I don't do something really stupid, like, <laughs> they're, they're like, a lot of part of their game just falls apart. So it's kind of cool that just lopping off your, like, C game, I guess, and then keeping to your A and B is, like, way better than trying to make your A a little tiny bit better. Yeah. And so you'll see this, like, with really, like, good players. It's the, just basically what they do is they're, like, hovering for position, and then they just force their opponents to do something, and then they just punish. But against really good players, getting to that that preferred space gets tougher and tougher. And um, the amount of options that your opponent throws at you when they get better it gets wider and wider, so you have to be able to prepare for more. So that's like what makes a good player in, the, in those situations, as opposed to right. a bad one. And these spacings get smaller and smaller. Yeah. Uh, and you're not sharing your screen with me. I'm watching the stream, so it's like if you could share it. Okay. I can see it more quickly. Um, share screen. Okay, my apologies. All right. All right. So we're just gonna we're gonna talk about something that actually really frustrated me, um, even at the high level. Okay. And that's like stage counter picks. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you particularly get quite mad about this. Yeah, because even like Armada... Um, PPU, Arm you made Ar a big deal about? A PPU I made a huge deal about. Like, if I could have coached them right there, I would have said no FD, no no, no Stadium, no FD, no Dreamland. Um, yeah, about his, I'm not yelling set, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and I'll like show some examples of even like the top players like messing up like counter picks. And this is actually like something that like really was an interesting one. I've seen this man combo hungry box zero to eighty. That should okay. not like let's talk about it. That does not feel possible for All right. Even so as gate time three, give examples uh, here. This, like six zero to death so, on uh, battlefield, but we're gonna take it. This is a match that starts off with um, Falco Peach, but PP later switches to Marth. And I'll just go over like kind of the strengths um, oh. of what Peach is going for. And a lot of these matchups, um, like just for like Peach, for example, she relies on turnips. Like if you read Armada's guide, he's she's really gets her openings from turnips. So whenever she can, yep. um, of course they're playing low, but whenever they're far away and she can, she'll grab a Armada will grab a turnip, unless he has them already cornered. Oh. <laughs> but. That was um, nice like so, what these long stages work really tend to work really well. Although he loses, um, he loses game four, um, but Armada runs out of stages here. Um, so I think this is where the Fox could have gone brought out. But um, she, he ends up picking Final Fountain of Dreams, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, Armada lost. And I think Armada comments on this later. But as soon as I saw this counter pick, I was like, this is going to be a disaster, because. Right. Because Armada just literally just could not do anything. Like the way that Armada gets in is with turnips, and because the stage is so narrow, like there's no way Armada can grab a turnip without getting punished. And that's pretty much what happened this entire set or this entire match. Like Armada not being able to land or getting cornered or can't throw out a turnip. Anyway, so did he so, play PC five games of this set? Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. If, yeah, anything, I forgot. if anything, this would have been the perfect opportunity to bring out Fox. Right. Um, because if you just look here, like, Armada has finals, no way. Oh, go ahead. In the finals of this tournament, he went all Fox, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. I, I, part of what I thought was that she he didn't want to reveal Fox to PP so that PP can analyze it. Because PP gets to sit back and wait and, like, study it and, like, get a feel yeah. for it. Um, so Armada took a risk to try to invest in Grand Finals, which didn't really play out for him. But nonetheless, this was like a really bad counter pick for him, um, yeah. given how they play the match. So even like the best, they like don't they make questionable counter pick decisions. Um, if I were in Armada's shoes, I would have. I mean, the best option would have been a, been to pick Fox and um, go to Dream. like Dreamland or something. If that wasn't already taken. Or if he didn't already win that, but like a big stage featuring Dreamland would have been the pick. Anyway, so we're yep. going to just talk about stages. I mean, a lot of this is like very intuitive, and you should probably already like know most of this, but this is just to go with the stream and kind of my insight on like how I view counter picks, and then we can go over some sets. Sure, yeah. So the way like I like to categorize it is, is there a platform or no platform? No, is there a top platform or no top platform? So that's like one thing I look at. So the top four stages have top platforms. I also look at the links. And this is really important if you um, deal with a campy character or a character that's really good with dash dancing. So is it really wide as seen in the top three stages? Yep. Medium here, um, you can still dash dance, but it doesn't really re rely on horizontal zoning as much and narrow where dash dancing isn't really that good. High ceiling versus low ceiling, this is something you probably already know from playing Fox all the time. Yep. Um, I play Fox on Fox occasionally. Yeah, and then Blast Zones. Um, wide, medium, narrow, and this kind of affects like how long characters live. You should already know this. So anyway, picking carry stage, general character versus character, look at character strengths. like. Can they corner you? Are they good on platforms? Can they utilize top platform really well? Um, something I like to say is like effective life. So if we look at a Dreamland, right? When you play against a Peach, um, their effective life against you as Sheik is probably going to be like 160%, whereas your life is going to be like 120. 
Right. And, and so that's something that's important. But you you gain more stage. So do you value like not getting hit as much and not getting cornered versus like your opponent having more life as a result? Like there's trade offs. Character based then, so it's kinda like personal preference. Yeah. And also mobility. Um, I don't know, but playing left in on Dreamland is not fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, just watching Kira play Leffen in general, I was like, oh, this does not look fun. Yeah. This yeah. looks quite hard. <laughs> yeah, I would never, like, every time he picked Dreamland, when he picked Dreamland, I was like, oh, he's going to get three-stocked. Like, when I, because Wes, Wes uh, Mogwai was, like, streaming it on his phone, I was like, what stage did Kira pick for game one? Dreamland. Oh, this is over. <laughs> that, she just got crushed. Yeah. yeah. He did pretty good on Battlefield games, I'll give him that. Yeah, the Battlefield game is better because, like, fly, he can't run around in circles and, like, just yeah. pew, 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 pew. Um, so, this is, like, my preferences. So, you have to always, like, kind of look at style. That's why I had, like, two. So, like, my priorities against a campy fox is Yoshi's Final and Found of Dreams. Um, I think Battlefield's a pretty good stage. And then, bad is Dreamland Stadium and FD. Noted. Yeah. Um, as the flip, on the flip side, like um, I think Dream aggress against aggressive foxes, what I tend to notice yeah. is that they're not as good as on Dreamland or Battlefield. Um, Stadium and Found of Dreams are okay stages, and FD and Yoshi's are always going to be bad for us. I mean, FD sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the one thing that I like to do is on the character collect screen. Um, yeah, you said about Yoshi's though. An aggressive fox that's bad, 100% of the time. Um, against aggressive fox, um, I don't. Since I, Kirby Kaze lately, he 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 will strike to Yoshi's. Yeah, um, it's a it's a questionable pick, and I think that is more of a preference overall. Okay. Um, but if you're playing against like, like I would never take Mango to like yeah. Yoshi's. Like I'm, I'm perpetually cornered. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, FD is always bad. Like. Yeah, I understand that. There's yeah. just no way to. There's no way around that. Yeah. Um, the one thing I like to do, uh, if I play, because like most foxes have reputations, so like you can kind of guess. But if you're playing a, a fox you've never heard of, like they pick fox and you play rock over scissors. Yeah. Is, um, I like to ban FD. Like if I get first pick, I like to ban FD. Okay, that's what I do. And then you you want to pay special observation to like what they ban. Because that will give you, like, a light read. So if they, like, ban, like, the, the big stages... Um, if they ban the two small stages, like Yoshi's and FOD, then they're most likely a camping fox. Okay. So you can be in Dreamland and you go to Battlefield. So that's, like, one thing that's, like, really important. And this, like, can also give you a clue in your counter pick. Is like, what's the first stage they ban? And usually that's, like... Some top players are a little tricky with this, but that usually indicates, like, that's the stage they just absolutely hate playing on. And then Falco, I think you already know this. You you played this like a hundred times, or like a thousand times. A thousand times. Plays my so yeah. much. Um, so you uh, may agree with me here. You may not. Uh, Final destinations are always our bad stage. This is I hundred percent agree with you on this entire list. I yeah. think I would split up a tier uh, of Yoshi's Stadium and FOD. Like FOD is a little better than you know, in my mind, at least in my opinion. And just from watching the matchup, it seems like FOD is not as good as Battlefield and Dreamland, but it's better than Yoshi's. Like, yeah, it's about it. Yoshi's is uh, questionable. So this is like almost as hard as FD. Really? <laughs> I just Yoshi's you get you get comboed the crap out of. Oh my god, you just get. They, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, um, it can be questionable, especially if you get shined off the top. Oh yeah, and you can also dive the top. Yeah, like you just, I don't know. It's it's a tough stage. Yeah. Um, I like coring Falco. Like the reason why I like it is because like I can exhaust double jumps really, really well on that. Oh, you definitely destroy Falco on, on yeah. Yoshi's too. But it's just like it's hard to get an opening. Ugh. And then final deep, um, Dreamland and Battlefield are usually good picks. Um, Fountain of Dreams. A lot of people waver, and I debate myself on it because. Um, it's kind of narrow, so you can get cornered pretty easily and get caught on platforms, but a lot of people like it too, so 
Um, stadium's okay. Um, sometimes those platforms can hurt you. Um, yeah. Yoshi, Yoshi's um, and Final <laughs> D are probably your bad stages. Going off of uh, that one set from Anaheim, PB and M2K. Yeah, I think that's the, that's exactly where they struck. Was like M2K wanted Dreamland, PB wanted Yoshi's and FD. So yeah, that's like it seems pretty correct. Um, so it ultimately depends because there's different styles of marks. So like, um, I don't like Final Destin. If I'm not a good dash dancer or footsie zoner, then Final D is going to be a nightmare for me. If I play like Hybrid, who his game relies on dash dancing. Right. Yeah. And if you can't get a platform to bail you out, then you're going to get grabbed an awful lot. Um, against a zony mark that likes stage control, like a Dewan. Like, you probably don't want Yoshi's because he's really good at taking center stage. So, kind of preference. Okay. One thing I've done a lot versus Falcon is uh, just take them always to small stages, even though. I don't like. Is that the best, you think? Like, Yoshi's versus Falcon, Sheik versus Falcon? Um, what do you have? That's what oh, you have. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, sick. It's working out for me. I didn't um, know that was the correct thing. But yeah, I was like, I hate getting them just running arms circles around me. So, I try to pick the smallest stages possible. So that I can always kind of keep the pressure on. Yeah. It's a lot harder for me in neutral when they have so much room to work with. That comes down to like mobility. So like larger stages that are really good at mobility, you want to take that away. Um, I would say FOD is like usually the worst. Yoshi is they have a few gimmicks, but I don't think uh, they're really, I don't think those gimmicks are really that spectacular. Sure. Like they got the scar jump or like the wall jumps, but like you can just wait for it. And once you figure it out, it's like, oh, okay. Like that that's the only gimmick. Uh, Battlefield's probably my third pick. Like, if they ban, like, let's say you want on FOD, they ban, or they you you want Yoshi's, they're probably going to ban FOD if it's a game three scenario. Then Battlefield's probably your next best choice. Yep. Uh, Final D is really questionable, and that's a specific target ban that I have on Jeff Sound Inspector. Uh. Um, the reason why is because he just full hops, and he's like really good at full hopping. And like I, I play this like cat and mouse game, and then somehow I get caught by like a random stomp, and then I die, and I'm just like, okay. Um, the reason why like so if we expanded, um, like Jeff just like jumps all over the place, and does like this, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well he can. I have no protection over my head. Um, whereas even on Dreamland, like, like if I were to expand this. Um, like, I can nice kind of stay here, and he can't, like, just jump on me and, like, go like this and wreck me. Like, I have some protection over the angles he can sure. approach me at. So that's why, like, against a Jeff, like, I prefer What's Dreamland. Like on a uh, uh, Stadium? I like Stadium more than, than FD. Against, uh, F against Falcon? Against Falcon. Yeah, I do too. Um, against Silent Spectre in particular. Okay. I just feel like, I don't know. The ones that can move are so annoying. It's so hard to, to put any pressure on them. But I don't know. Well, the reason is it's because, like, even on Dreamland, if they're, if they're playing, like, kind of, like, lame, or, like, yeah. you know, kind of, I guess, defensive, like, and you, like, chase them, like, you go this, you go right a little bit, like, they can just, like, go around you, and then, like, yeah. whoop de doo and then if you it's overextend, different. like, you'll get hit. But I love uh, Yoshi's. Yeah, Yoshi's in FOD for sure, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, versus Peach, um, this ultimately comes down to preference. Like, you can even go Dreamland, and it's not that bad because if you know how to camp, like, you can just like if you play Okami style, like, Peach can't do anything. Like, needle What's camp, just... like needle camp? back airs, and like don't get into anything confrontational. Like, you can win that with like without like ever getting hit. Um, but, but there's such up is usually uh, Final D, which I guess is not correct. Battlefield looks better, but yeah, okay. Battle Final D is really good if you can zone and you don't get yourself cornered. So like that's like my preferred pick. But then right. you have to take into account that once you're off stage, like you're really vulnerable to like coming back on stage because you're gonna have to land on stage. They do like f short oh, right. flow yeah. cancel there. They get you off stage, and you can like they can start the cycle as like low as like sixty percent. And you have a lot fewer mix-ups. Like, I got what you're saying. Yeah. Um, 
But ultimately, like, this comes out to preference, like, I think any stage is, like, decent. Um, versus Sheik, your personal preferences, like, do you like to dash dance? Are you, like, a dash dancer? Do you like to corner people? Like, cor if you like to corner people and play, like, that kind of game, and then, like, a smaller stage is preferred. If you like to dash dance in zone and then okay. kind of run away, then big stages. Um, if you don't like chain grabs, then, then you FOD. can take FOD, because... Those low platforms will get you out. Sure. Um, at lower percentages, where like you can get out as like low as twenty, whereas like on battlefield it's like seventy something. I don't like the dash dance, but I want to like the dash dance. So I'm gonna pick the big stages till I get good at it. Like I want to. That's the one I want to beat because I feel like it's the strongest. Yeah. Um, and then versus puff. Um, actually, this is like one another case where like any stage <laughs> technically works. Um, people say Final D is bad. I personally have a really strong win rate on it because I can zone really well with back airs. And as long as you don't, you're not overzealous on full hops and double jumps, like it's not that bad of a stage. The only thing qualm is like if you're forced to be on stage, you're pretty much dead. Okay. So just like remember, don't like also tunnel on like character specific counter picks. Look at your opponent's skill set. Like, are they camping? Like. Do they utilize platforms well? Like, can they dash dance? Like, and like, look at your own skill set, like, too. Yeah, especially at my level, people are like, are like graphs where only one thing is spiking. Like, they only have one skill set. They probably really practice at all. Like, if, like if I'm good at gimps or something, for example, people pick a stage where I can't do that as well, like FD or something. Yeah. And people I play, like, if they're really good at movement, they're actually probably bad at a lot of other things. So as long as I get a stage where they can't move well, I'm neutralizing most of their practice time. Because yeah. right now we're well rounded enough. Definitely. So stage picks are actually more important, I almost feel. Yeah. But like as you get better, you want to get comfortable like on every stage because you're going to be like, especially like if you ever make it to like winter semis, like you play a best of five, you're expected to play on like five stages plus you get banned out of one. And so like you need to be good at all six eventually because like you have to play on like each stage like eventually when you get to that level. For sure. Anyway, so. Um, also, like, your personal skill sets as well factor into this, like, a lot of people are like, well, Marth versus Fox should be a free win on FD, but, like, if your chain grabbing game isn't good, then... Yeah, so that's shroomed. <laughs> yeah, shroomed in PPU rip. Um, and so, like, I always thought PPU's combo game was actually stronger on, like, Battlefield than on... State Stadium game looks pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. His uh, platform combo game is a lot better than his just raw chain grab. So, yeah. Oh yeah, he's so well. Alrighty, alrighty. So let's see, going to matches. Dude, KK is like amazingly good. Yeah. That's all I so, oh, did like lose to uh, SDJ. Uh, yeah. At, here. at this Funny recent driver. tournament, uh, which girl was called Nebulous. You were next. I think, yeah, I feel like they both played sloppy. Yeah, it wasn't like the best of ever, but I, just, I, was, I was sad because I wanted to see him beat SJ and learn from that matchup. Yeah, yeah. I uh, think the main thing is, like, when you look at, like, a KK, like, his, like, knowledge of, like, everything in this, like, bubble is really good. Wait. Which bubble? I can't. Okay, yeah, I see. Like that really here. big, yeah. a really big bubble. That's like where he's strong good. area too, right? That's like where Sheik shines. Yeah. So like, like you like put your opponent in here. Like KK usually makes the right option like ninety five percent of the time. Johnny think, is like, oh, go ahead. I just think KK is amazing, especially in this set. I They're think gonna... Johnny is like really good at like anywhere from like here to like here. Like. Like, he is so good in that range. Like, like he has, like, control... He, it seems like he has control over you, like, like as far as, like, here. Like, you watch him play, and that's, like, why he's, like, really good. Like, he makes you scared as far as that. It makes you think, like, oh, crap, like, what do I do? And he's, like... I think that's, like, why, like, he's, like, one of the best Falcons. Is like, because, like, he can play this, like, range really well and then find a favorable spot once he closes in here. Right. And that's why I think Johnny's really good. He is really good. Alrighty. So let's look at this. The first thing is he struck the Yoshis, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I think it's just personal preference. Lucky loves those full hot mix-ups, so it, Yoshi's kind of eliminates that based on how the stage layout is. Um, but it's interesting. I don't. Maybe it's just personal preference. Sure. Alrighty. Let's see. What are the, did you have like any key questions that you want to look at here? Um, not particularly. I wanted to just you hear you talk about some of the things KK does because uh, I thought the set was amazing. And like in the past, we've watched some high level sets together on these shows, and I feel like I've learned some important stuff. Okay. Just cool. Offhand, but you talking about it? Okay, so on a side note, like if you ever can, um, learn neutral start, cause like KK has a preferred spot, and like, and and Lucky has to find a way to get down, and that's like the importance of like neutral starting if you can. Yep. Or if you can cheat and get player four here against anything but player three, then you're good. What's <laughs> player four? Middle one. Player four is the bottom middle, but if they player three you and they're Falco, they get a free drill at the beginning where you force a shield. <laughs> what? <laughs> like it's like really silly. Like <laughs> so, if you ever play West, do not pick player four. Don't do it. I know he will. He's scummy. All right. So, um, right from the get go, um, he's using these up tilts to kind of wall out um, Lucky from getting to center easily, so like Lucky has to find a way to move around and eventually get control of the map. Sure. He does, gets center. So like a lot of it is just like little things. So like even just like knowing to crotch cancel there and like finding openings. Uh, let's go. We're gonna go in half speed, actually. Sure. All right. All right. Like doing little things. Oh, nice. Like so, he's just spacing. So now, like, what he's like really doing in these like couple seconds is just really just like getting a feel for like when like he's gonna approach. He gets hit here. Um, but. What he's doing is trying to see like if Lucky is willing to like throw out an air. So notice how KK positions himself just out of it. Uh, so a lot of it is just kind of feeling out without actively committing. So both of them aren't like committing to anything. See, they're kind of like just kind of waiting. I don't know what Lucky was thinking on that grab. To be honest, that was so yolo. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, even top players do that all the time. So it's like. This is the punish. That's so hard. Alright. So um nothing like really spectacular, like just like good spacing. And like doing little that. things. Like KK is yep. so smart at just like controlling. Like, look at how he always like finds like just good space for himself. To like find those like little hits. Well, I love that he yeah he doesn't try to challenge that. So a lot of it's like a little bit of cat and mouse, just like you said. Um, did oh, I go too far? Sorry. Right here, he thought he was going straight, but he still covers and doesn't commit to anything, and then yeah, like waits. So it's like just a perpetual, just like good player strategy of like just. Being in the right space that always threatened, but like trying to force a reaction. Yeah. It was like a win, smaller win. Either he gets the kill, or like the, the continued punish, or he gets center stage and the guy, and like he's on the ledge, so it was like a nice choice. Yeah. I didn't really like this right here. That full hop was pretty questionable, because Lucky had position. Yeah. And that's how he gets this little punish here. And Lucky should have gone to kill here, but. I don't know why that didn't hit. Wow! So, oh my gosh. All that came from that really questionable needle. Yeah. Alright, still right. like 
arcing to control center here. Yeah, I like seeing what KK does when he gets his invincibility, because he usually ends up with center stage. Yeah. Oh. So like little like just like knowing like that he could get the grab there. Okay, so let me just explain that because that's a very interesting punish. Yeah. Um. So you can go. So if he goes for the grab here, what what happens is Fox just goes off stage and then the punish ends. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Um, so that's why he goes for it here, and that's like one thing I'm like I've been trying to think about. It's like, okay, do I regrab here? or Do I go for a grab? Because if I look at the next punish, it's like, oh, okay, like he gets out for free. I mean, he's on the ledge, but if they can do invincible ledge dash, then I only get eight yes. percent. Especially on Yoshi's, yeah. where the ledge dash is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so instead, he gets like another two hits. Yeah. Beautiful. What about here? That's like the worst feeling in the world when you lose a punish because like about its shine. Another good F tilt. So like he always finds a way to get lucky like to miss position. So he gets back, barely gets not shine spiked, but good just reaction here, um, recognizing the situation. And that's like one thing I wish I was better at. Like KK's F tilts are really good. Amazing. And oh my gosh, KK, you're so good. Ah. Oh. He like he must just memorize this stuff. Like I don't he finds him in at the end of combos like you never think you can just put him in there. Yeah. I think it's just situational awareness, like he's aware of like the heights. Yeah, and it's like a percentage based thing too, and it's like that kid he knows that all is just it's, it's impressive. Because it's guaranteed kills in the in the times that he's using it. So minor victories here and there for both players. It's just kind of like skirmishing. Yeah, like it's really good. What I like here is just once again like how he like, like can establish position, even though he doesn't really gain anything for it. They both like win minor gains, but they're not able to like fully checkmate each other. Although right. the roll is like kind of bad. Once again, another crotch cancel there, which is really good. But. Look, he just holds ground here once again. And then just like reacts. He just holds position and that's like just really good. Yep. But it doesn't really get uh, that full punish. Right. Man, I've been thinking that like if it's I think you have to use claw grip or something, but if you could do uh instant uh forward airs, like, the second you get a jump squat, I just think there's be so many applications. There could be. So, like, Lucky was just, like, Lucky played a lot of these, like, really bad situations really well. And, like, got him out. Because, like, look, like, the way that, look at how, like, KK just, like, got center stage again. Right. Just, like, from walking. But, um, Ugh. most Foxes there would have just, like, held shield because they were scared. But Lucky made the right decision there to just, like, go at Lucky go at KK as opposed to letting yeah. KK take the shield. Another good F tilt into... F tilt like, can intercept so well. And just... Uh -huh. and like... All the little things that KK does really well. Like, I feel like he, like, goes for the A-plus, like, punish. Oh, yeah, he's punished. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, kind of yolo Lucky's movement's good. Like, KK almost... I rarely see him get gimps. He does, like, the punishes, the super strong punishes. Yeah. Like, like racks up percentages. Like that's good. He also might have the most advanced follow up off grabs. Yeah. I was talking to him and I'm not yelling, and he said, like, he mostly does dash tags, like you mentioned, like dash tag follow ups. And just really, just really good at keeping that going. Can, can I just mention something that was just, like, really amazing? That just, like, blew my mind. 
watch this. All right, look at how he gets out here. Oh, <laughs> duck and wave dash. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm like that's crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy as I mean. So a lot of it is like Lucky's just being kind of like the one thing that like I've like kind of helped Lucky with is not over shielding. And if you notice, like KK kind of assumes that Lucky will assume stay grounded, but Lucky will jump out and escape KK's potential like vortex. Right. Oh man. Oh, Lucky won that one. Yeah. And I think that came down to like. So KK had the right idea in terms of stage control. It's just that when they got into that Flitzy's range, even though Lucky wasn't like a slight disadvantage, Lucky always made the right choice to like get out, and he won most of those like little exchanges in Flitzy's. If that was yep. like any summary to like where Lucky kind of won, I felt like everything else was pretty like even. Yep. Oh, I don't even know how he got the grab. All right, let's look at another match where he does right. I love the follow-up. <sighs> oh my god. Look at look at his like little thing. Little thing to notice here. See most shakes would stay here. Yeah. Um, look at how KK runs the center. See that? Just yeah. like little things of just like stage control. But he loses it. But Fox is shielding. Alright. When Fox hits the dash dance, it's like tough times. Yeah. It's fun. Tough. I feel like all the characters with good dash, they get to go in. When they get going, you can't like. It sucks. It feels so much better when you're attacking them. Yeah. So this is like a classic punish that, you, that all characters should learn on like. Fox in particular. As soon as you see that drill up here, you need to be like dash dancing and punishing on reaction. Because that's a free grab or dash attack. Right. Although Lucky does a really good job at like crotch canceling it because he's good. It's amazing. Oh, I love that. Like the Foxtrot dash dance into grab. That was pretty cool. He was just like, he nared the second Lucky pushed him off. He like knew he was gonna get pushed off. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. And then he doesn't learn there, obviously. But... Mm -hmm. There he is. Sandra gets card. Oh, Lucky went low, so it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can. I'll speed it up a little bit. Wow, this is so fast. It's lightning. Man, it was a fast game. Oh, he went on stage. Yeah. Wow, this is like so fast for me. I'm like getting my blood. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Sometimes the good players are like, they're playing so fast. I feel like when I watch the half speed, it's like a normal speed yeah. for me to think about it. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to get context because I don't. I, I'm not fully understanding. Like, because a lot of, I mean, a lot of it you're kind of gambling because, like, even like those dash attacks and like run up grabs, like you have to kind of like get some reads. Right. Like that. That was like a read, knowing that like KK when wasn't actively committing. That was crazy pressure. Can you watch that again? Yeah. Yeah. What does he exactly do on his shield? That's crazy. He does. He stays just out of shield grab range. Um, so it's pretty good. Up till. Uh, okay. So he has Fox in that coveted space of uh, shielding and not having much, and so you can raw grab here, but that's essentially kind of a guess to say like they're specifically not going to spot dodge. And if you get spot dodge shine here, then you're dead. Ugh. So he chose a really good option of space, just enough that he doesn't get shield grab. Throw out a hitbox that can potentially poke. 
Beautiful. Yeah, and I believe the fox there uh, went for a. I believe by the fox went for a showground, and that's why he got hit. Okay. So it was kind of a bait, but like a well spaced one. Pressure. Oh my god. He rolls a lot to get out of pressure. Um, yeah, it's good. Because, like, once I commit to a jump towards your direction, if you can turn the other way once you see the jump, um, it's a really hard commit, a hard read for them to even hit you. So, if you notice, Joey loves to full hop a lot. Oh my gosh, that was so good. That was sick. See, like, all these, like, little things. Boom! Oh my god, that's so smart. Yeah, yeah. Instant hitbox where he needed it to be. But that fox play, though. I think Joey's pretty good, too, let's be honest. Yeah. That was just like a raw, the rawest of raw up smashes, and KK, you know it's better. KK knows better not to, than to throw out a hitbox. Um, I'll explain in, like a little context to that. So like, it it was like kind of a trick play. Like most foxes will like short hop, and if he did short hop, he would have gone hit. But Joey's a full hopper, and yeah. <laughs> Boom, done, done so. Yeah, but he knows better than to attack there. He should just re grab the ledge. He had a free ledge there. And so once again, like these uh. That's like the one thing that like Joey's like you always have to know about Joey, and this like counters like most common cheek pressure, especially if like um, Fox can be active. Like, like his full hop like beats that that short hop um, fair there. Yeah, Falco do this to me a lot. They full hop down air. Yeah. When I try to approach or like do anything, they just. Yeah, what you have to do is just, is just like kind of bait it and just don't throw out anything. Yeah, yeah, that's what like, I start to do. Yeah, is like, yeah, because they're doing it pretty much as a read, but it covers like almost everything. So you have yeah. to just yeah. If you do like anything like short hop related or like you do an F tilt, you will almost absolutely get it. Yeah, and that's like almost all your offensive options. So you like sort of just wait, but like it is a committal by them, so I just feel like when I wait it out, I can make them not yeah. kind of regret it. Oh no. Oh no, you lost it. I want to see how the stock ended. Right. So here, just like one little tip, is um, if you see that side B, but you know you can't cover it, then just just crouch. And then oh. you, can, you can hit them after, because it's crouch cancelable. Yeah, I need to do that. Uh, like, when I react, if I do react, I shield, and I think crouching is way better. Yeah. But that's only against a fox, because Falco, like, stuns you. Oh, really? So it's better shield versus Falco? Yeah. Oh, that's... Okay, good. Then I... All right, cool. Clutch. Clutch KK. KK is amazing. He is so damn good. So KK with this. He's as close. Maybe the best versus fox in the world. Uh, I, I think Gucci's up there, too. Wait, I'm talking about with Sheik. Or, um, uh, Flash. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Flash is really good, too. Flash is hella good. Dude, Flash is amazing. Flash is so good, actually. Flash feels like he has just the sickest neutral. Oh, my God. He just moves like a, like a falcon. Yeah. Like, I don't get how, like, his aerial zone, like, the way it does. Like, that's always yeah. been a mystery. No man, I, just, I love yeah, I love flash. So this is like one of the easiest ways to counter like full hop laser. It's so bad. The I reason, just run up. Yeah. Like here's like what happens. So one of two things happens. Like, like if you invade their space to like threaten their line, their lag. So he sees it once. Oh my gosh, you land here. You're yeah. in a really bad spot. Like, you either run away or you grab. The easiest solution here is to just to boost grab, so you cover their hitbox here and, like, behind them, too. 
right. with the boost scraps. And KK correctly so, boost scraps there. Because like, they, they don't have any momentum to like run away. Yeah, it's like a slow start. And you're moving super fast. Shake's boost grab is like so fast, fast grab. Yeah, and it also really works against a lot of characters. Um, it works against like Samus's that like wave dash back, and any character that like wants to, you re read a retreat from them when they land, it's it, like catches them. So like Marth, Falcon, like a lot of characters. It's so good. It's also dope when uh, when chain grabbing like Ganondorf or something like that. You can you can boost grab, and like yeah. it covers a lot of DIs. It covers more DIs. Than just like turning around grabbing. Yeah, so if you don't yeah. have like, yeah, it's like pretty sweet. Ganon sucks. Yeah, I mean, Ganon sucks anyway, but like, you can get that pick up for a long ass time with the boost grab. It's just dope. Let's see how much he gets. One. one. That's the one reason why, like, I don't like the this. The smash? Because if they DI it like this, like, you're still in lag, and like, it puts you in a very awkward spot. Like, where if they think. Like, buffer attack roll, like, you're not going to be prepared to cover it. I just feel like because the percentage was so low, it was not not the coolest time to do yeah. it, but, I mean, it's still, like, guaranteed percent, as opposed to, like, going for the re-grab and maybe messing up the next thing. Yeah. You know, so I can see why he does that kind of stuff. Okay, I gotta say, this is, like, just, like, really good footsies. I'll explain why. Sure. Um, <sighs> okay. Oh, go ahead. I just love Sheik's backflip there. It feels like your hitbox like is so hard to hit, and then you you just dodge a lot of stuff. So this like micro spacing is just like another reason why KK is so good. This is the effective range of what Fox is for this attack, like that he could do, like right. And that's back air. And knowing Joey, he wants to throw out a hitbox, so KK wisely just waits outside of that range. Ah, oh, beautiful. Be even more beautifully punished, but yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. He was hoping that the fox is going to hang himself, but Lucky knows to not, um, let's see. Let Overcommit. Um, not just that, but, like, he knows that he needs to get out. Like, most, no, the, the reason why, like, he's good is because he knows how to escape these, like, kind of bad scrimmer situations where if he kind of overcommits, he's not there for long. Bad foxes, they land, they spot dodge, or they land, hold shield, bam, like you, you're shield pressure. And that's the difference between like Joey and like a average fox. Right. Yeah. He's definitely not an average fox. Joey's amazing. See, once again, like Joey escapes, and this goes back to like Joey's a good fox. Um, just like in this situation, um, KK is hoping for is KK is fishing for a roll. So let me show you. So he has Fox in the shield. Yeah. But like he know he Joey is situationally aware of the situation, so situationally aware of the situation. Yeah, so like he's expecting a roll, but as yep. a result of KK's back turn, like he can he can escape. Cause like turn around F tilt's probably not gonna be a very common option here. Oh, beautiful. That was a beautiful escape, actually. Yeah. Super uncommon choice. KK still, like, turns it around. Oh, he misses the wave dash. So, uh, like, yeah. KK just gets out of there. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, if your back is turned, it's a really bad situation. Right. Okay, that's a that's a classic bait, but I think what K, what happened to KK was that he thought Joey wasn't gonna do that kind of scrub shield grab. So I'll show you. He'll get the grab. He'll get a nair into attack chase, which is really good here. Yeah. He knows he's late. Oh, he's way late. Yeah. He's super late. Like so, he he does the fair on shield and does the classic fair dash dance bait, which is a really good bait, a really good option um, to really get habits. But he didn't think that Joey was bad enough to do a, a bad shield grab here. But it doesn't punish in time. See, everybody does it. Okay, so he sees the mix-up here. Hello, hello, hello? Davo! Hello? Dav again. Hello. Okay, good, we're back. Okay. Um. Anyway, so he sees the mix-up here, 
and then sees that the shield goes up right away because he's conditioned that fair. Yeah. And so now he goes for this. Um, I like that he knows that he can get that F tilt because uh, of the percentage. That's yeah. pretty sweet. Um, one thing that's like amazing here is that um, just like another good escape by Joey is that he sees the commitment to run here and knows that it's very unlikely even if KK somehow like reacts and reads and back airs here, he's still living. Like he'll be on stage as opposed to the situation where if he techs in place or tech rolls away, like he's off stage risking an edge guard. Yeah. And so that was actually an amazing tech option there. Oh! <laughs> Joe's so ballsy. <laughs> Uh, wow, what? Oh my gosh. He thought, I mean, that's like difficulty with like edge guarding Fox. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, cause well, which part is the Fox, dude? The, the equalizer. God, it sucks. Because Fire is so annoying. Because Joey could have easily just um, side bead like on top onto the stage, and KK wouldn't have been able to co cover. Right. So it's like a 50 50 of whether or not he was going to side B onto the stage or not. Right. All right. All right. Just a um, good maneuvering. Joey finally gets a hit, and usually you should be able to get like at least one hit or establish control on your invincibility. If you don't, then you're kind of like doing something wrong. If it becomes rare. It's interesting that Joey counterpicked to this stage. Yeah. Joey somehow likes this stage. That's what I've seen. Like, he seems to love this stage versus she. He picked it versus Mitch King and then lost on him and then and then Salty ran back. I remember that. Little, th little thing to point out here. Um, the, Sheik, the Sheik private chat is actually trying to figure out what to do in this situation. A chic private chat? Why am I not in the chic private chat? I can contribute. Um, I think you're in the Facebook group, the 22 2. Oh, maybe I am. Actually, let me take a look. Take yeah, you gotta, you gotta throw the kid in there, alright? I wanna come up. Twenty two two baby. There is a thread. Alright. Are you in this group? Twenty two. No, it's not, it's not actually twenty two. All right. Sheik. Sheik development and discussion. I am not. Oh, Sheik R and D. No, that's the wrong group. There's two groups. Oh yeah, Sheik. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one's a good group. Look at the equality here. So I'm a bad. I'm bad. But we have Shroom. We have KK. We have Reno. Kira, Ladandis, Atma, Swedish oh. Delight, Drug Fox. Stars. And future Evo champion Atriot, too. That's crazy. He's in here? Yeah. Plup. And <laughs> I don't know who these are. I'm sorry. I don't know your real names. Plup, uh, Plup double down on Sheik. He's, he's in it to win it. I think so. Like, he was really demoralized after um, after Apex. And for a while, like, he kind of asked me for, like, Sheik things, but, like, he hasn't talked to me lately. But presumably, I think he's playing Sheik. All right. First, first in this thing is, we have to stop 20XX before it's too late. <laughs> From Kirby Kazik. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. So we're all debating on, like, what to do in this situation, because it seems like there is probably some optimal... Um, uh decision tree we just don't know what it is based on like the numerous options that Fox can do between shine stalling jumping side being and up being and spot do and air dodging yeah but I think we all agree that fair that four um that four throw here can be the starting decision tree to good things we just don't know what those good things are huh so in this spot, I would almost always forward throw, but you think, okay, so you're saying that's probably the best idea, you're trying to figure out how? 
yeah, we're just like trying to see like what decision tree can cover the most options or like can cover like the different timing windows. Cause like, I mean, there's different timing windows, right? Like there's a timing window, like if they shine stall into something, that's like a different timing window than sure. Uh, like, and what covers most of these timing windows the best is what we're trying to figure out. That's awesome. I don't know what that grab was. I'm pretty sure that was an input error. Probably a near. Happens. Happens to the best of them. I love when I get that free game. That hits, right? It's the best feeling in the world as a sheik. <laughs> Just makes the opponent so mad. Oh, you're uh, so done. Classic Kirby Kaze needles. Oh. oh my god, I love that too. You know that actually came from just that B. Yeah, no. It's funny because that ugh, it's just the best. Dude, this is um this is sweet justice to all the times we got side bead and killed. Like right. by stupid fox. Or Falcos, yeah, when Falco spikes you ugh, and you're gone. Yeah. This is to fox privilege. Oh my god. Yeah. It's all the times like you try to give up a fox, get hit by the fire effect, and you then die. they get off of it and you die. Yeah, that's <laughs> that was a little sweet justice. Oh, good shine. Um, that was a pretty much like a lock lock situation for KK to not get out of. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Hey, can, I have to go pretty soon, Tavo. So right. I don't know what to set. But. Okay. So pretty much it just like. States position, good decision making, and kind of was what it boiled down to. Um, like, I mean, there's nothing like extraordinary. I guess the good thing that we could take away from this is that there's nothing really extraordinarily special about what he does. He just picks the right option, holds right. stage, and it's Consist all it's all fundamentals. Yeah, that's what. Remember, uh, I heard Toph interviewed one time after he played doubles with like, dang, I don't remember who he played with. He might have played with Armada. He played with like another god against two gods. Or against Music and Armada. He yeah. played with Nick. It was Toph and Mango, I think. And he was like, what really separates those three guys from me is like they're just they're more consistent on all the small fundamental stuff. They just like don't they don't mess it up like ninety percent of the time. Like ninety nine percent of the time. They don't mess it up. Yeah, I agree. And it's because like that I mean, like, I think a lot of people like, I think a lot of people get this like really bad image of like twenty XX and like like even if you watch like Lucky, he doesn't do any twenty XX techniques. Like anything that's like really hard to do. Like it just, they just have the fundamentals done really down really well. Just like consistent, good DI, uh, good stage control. They get nice bread and butter follow ups and everything. They don't drop that much stuff. That's what I noticed from just watching a lot of games recently. Yeah, and so like pretty much, pretty much like, if there's like any hope too, it's just like refining, 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 making these improvements. To, like. Little yep. little improvements to every aspect of your game gets you like better and like as you get better like you might not like see like an immediate jump but like there will come a point where you just suddenly just jump and like you start being like a whole new tier of players. It's exciting. One thing I was saying at the beginning is this is a concept that I learned when I was trying to learn poker for a long time. Uh, it's about lopping off your C game, and it's like you have your A game, your B game, and your C game, and your A game is like your super flashy, super cool stuff. You know the multi shine into whatever into Wave dash, wave land, like a crazy thing, like a super awesome combo. And the C game would be like your stupid bad habit that just gets you killed. And yeah. like, you can get so much more mileage out of getting rid of the bad stuff than like trying to like get that super cool A game thing perfect. Because you can, you're, you're never gonna not have, you're never gonna have an all A game tournament. You're yeah. never gonna have a where you play your best for every game. So like, just getting rid of the actual terrible stuff and having a consistent B and A game is like so much better than having like a tiny bit better on your your super high. Yeah. I think that's like a really good point and that's like something like I wanted to articulate in an article because like I think that's what Johnny said is like he always wants to make his like C and D game like good enough to beat somebody else's B game or yeah. like A game. 